Uh, this should be the last part of this case and the second Ace Attorney game. Court will now reconvene. I assume both sides are ready? Y yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. I can understand the defense acting like this. However, why do you also seem distraught, Mr. Edgeworth? I... that... It's nothing, Your Honor. What's wrong with Edgeworth? It looks like something unexpected just happened to him. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you could please tell the results of the handwriting analysis and this impacts the suicide note. Y yes Your Honor. Unfortunately, we have discovered that the suicide note is a forgery. What? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This... this note was not written by Miss Impax herself. It is a fake. Would you care to explain what is going on? If this was not written by Miss Impax, then who wrote it? We would need more time to do a more detailed analysis, however... It appears that the handwriting matches that of the victim, Mr. Juan Corrida. Mr. Corrida? Well, well. It looks like Miss Impax never left a suicide note after all. She never wrote anything about Ongard. However, Your Honor, even though this suicide note is indeed a fake, Mr. Ongard could not have known that, and so that facts... That facts... THOSE facts, or THIS FACT. Acting under the assumption that it was real, he had plotted to possess it. That does sound very plausible. This theory that Ongar had no idea that the suicide note was fake. Something seems a little wrong with it. The defense believes that the theory the prosecution has stated contradicts testimony. If everything the prosecution has proven up to this point is true, then it's impossible for Ongar to not have known it was a fake. What is this little item called again? I... a video camera, Your Honor. Well, a very small one, but... Oh, that's right, a camera. Oh, you kids near fancy toys nowadays. Mr. Edgeworth, earlier you claimed that Mr. Ongar knew the existence of this note because it was spying on the victim. Isn't that right? If that were true, then this means Mr. Ongar would have known that the victim had forged the note. So then, the defendant knew the suicide note was a fake. It doesn't make sense that way. If we go by that logic, then Ongard would never have asked the killer to take the bear from Corrida because he wanted the suicide note inside of it. Of course, this begs the question. If Ongard was spying on him so much, how come... exactly where would Corrida have the chance to write and forge this suicide note if Ongard was spying the entire time on him? So really, that note shouldn't exist. Not because it's a forgery, but because... It shouldn't exist because there's no chance that Corrida could have written it without Ongard knowing. And if... Ongar knew that it was fake, he would never have wanted the bear that has the note inside of it. The bear is a paradox! And if that's true, then the situation has suddenly changed in a very dramatic way. Exactly, Your Honor. The prosecution's theory as to what Mr. Ongar's motive for murder was, it has suddenly disappeared into thin air. But, Your Honor, it's not as if Mr. Ongar monitored Mr. Corrida 24 hours a day. Considering the spy cameras were all over his house, yes! He did. Perhaps the victim wrote the note in a place Mr. Ongar didn't know of. Well, right back at you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why don't you show us some proof that the victim made the forgery at an unknown place? <laughs> it 
It looks like this time it is you who has dug his own grave. <sighs> As I figured. Huh? As you figured? As I figured, it came down to this after all. Mr. Edgeworth, you are not making any sense. I can't think of a single person who has really made sense in the entire case that I have played to date on this Let's Play. When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. The question is, what next? What next? If the prosecution can't prove Mr. Ongard's motive through the evidence, then we must prove it from another angle. Well, I agree with you there. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to call a witness to the stand at this time. Oh, well, that's fine. However, this witness... This witness is a little... unusual. Edgeworth stuttering? This isn't like him at all. I don't know, have you been listening to me, you know, talking in this Let's Play? I still bite my tongue all the time. Unusual? Well, what sort of witness is this person, Mr. Edgeworth? This witness is one who is perfectly fit to answer once and for all the question of who was it that hired Shelley the Killer to commit suit? Murder, not suicide. I wonder if you can hire an assassin to assassinate himself. Brain candy. No such person exists who can answer that question with such certainty. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth, who is this witness? It is... it's... Um... Yes, go on. Who is it? The man himself. Mr. Shelley the Killer. Oh, Mr. the Killer. Wait, 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 wait! Shelley the Killer? You mean... the killer? I... I mean the assassin? Yes, your honor. He's coming here? To the witness stand? Well, yes, in a manner of speaking. I recognize that this is a very unusual circumstance, so I ask for your permission. Well, Mr. Wright? Y yes Is this alright with you? D do I have a choice here? I can't really do much else to drag this trial out. The defense has no objections, Your Honor. I wonder if it really is a way to do this. Very well then. The prosecution calls our witness to the stand. Edgeworth, is there no other way left to us? It's really the only way for us to be together, to be like... Odette and the Prince jumping to their deaths if their love isn't allowed in this world. Now then, witness, I... Uh, your name and your occupation, please. Very good, sir. By the way, yes, this walkie-talkie looks like him with the line in between. And the dial button on the left side that looks like his monocle eye. My name is Shelley the Killer, and I am a professional assassin. I... I say... what is going on here? Your Honor? How can you remain so calm? And what is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it was delivered to me just now, and it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source, Mr. the Killer will testify to this court. So this must be what that urgent phone call he got earlier was about. Oh, no, this will not do. I cannot allow this in my court. First of all, we can't even be sure this is really Mr. DeKiller himself. Witness, please present some sort of proof that you are in fact Shelley DeKiller. I understand. Please wait one second. It's so hungry... M Maya! A voice, Mr. Wright. Can you confirm anything from this? The defense has no objections to this person. We are satisfied that this man is indeed Shelley the Killer. It looks like we have run into yet another unexpected turn of events. 
Well, it just seemed like we have too many choices in these circumstances, so... Now then, witness. There is one thing I would like to confirm before we speak of anything else. And what would that be? At the request of a client, you killed Mr. Juan Corrida. Is this correct? It is as you say. I did indeed kill Mr. Corrida. <laughs> now that we have answered that, let's move on to the name of your client. Very well. I just want to say something. Sure, the condition is that we do not trace the radio, you know, where his part of the radio is, but... We can say that and still trace it. Yes, he puts a lot of trust between himself and his client. But since we're not his client, we don't have to be trustful towards him. I'm just saying. This is all just a bad dream. Yes, a bad dream. Shelly the killer. What is he going to say? There is something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. And that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Mr. De Killer seems to be a very clever man. I'd almost say he seems to be mocking us. While he may appear to be our enemy, Your Honor, Mr. De Killer is only stating the truth. He is no hypocrite. He has always stood by this one belief. You mean about his trust between his clients and himself thing? It seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. No, I feel like saying that Shelley De Killer has a sort of blind idiot trust towards his clients. There's no way to know what's coming next, so stay cool and collect it, Phoenix. We can hear anything you have to say later. Can you please just tell us your clients? I don't think you understand your place, Mr. Attorney. As said, this is something I must first state. Do you know what the word first means? I know what the name FIST means! S sorry Go on. Well, it appears this is one witness you can't badge, Mr. Wright. That's only because you don't know about my situation. The trust between you and your client? I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. If too many people knew my face, it would be quite troublesome. And that is where you're testifying in this manner? This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the de Killer name so my clients can trust me. But couldn't someone stab you in the back and break your trust? It has never happened before, but if it ever did... Yes. That person wouldn't be my client for very long. They would certainly... That's enough. Please, no more. Very well. It was only a hypothetical, anyway. That seems a little strange to me. I mean, you're about to tell us the name of your client. I would think that this would be very bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside of their prescribed role. The role? This person tried to implicate another of the crime in order to save themselves. And this is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. So those two statements? 
where he said that his client was accused of murder instantly shows or points a finger at Matt but this part of being not just accused of murder but also trying to implicate somebody else obviously points to Andrews so basically yeah the plot twist that he's gonna tell us that Adrian is his client is not that well hidden you who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? To the gentleman who spoke just now. Excuse me, but would you care to die? No, 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 I didn't say anything. The judge had better watch himself. We understand, so please, tell us the name of your client. I'm afraid I cannot do that. I still have a few things to say before I do. Oh, the egomaniacal. It's not good for your health to be so aggravated. You won't live very long if you let everything bother you. Somehow, that coming from an assassin makes it less than comforting. I don't really care about this extra fluff. Just tell us the name already. Patience. Try to calm down a little. It's important to try and understand his mindset. He seems very steadfast and close, so you're going to have to work to get him to talk. I'm not his therapist, you know. Did I have to press something after pressing everything? I'm sorry, but I was wondering about something you just said. You said that your client had already broken the rules. A person who frames another is the worst kind of human. And that's why you feel you can betray this person? I have no trust relation with a client who can't understand their assigned role. Just my luck. An assassin with a conscience. Who would have figured? Now then, everyone. Do you think you can understand my logic? This case just keeps getting better and better. If you can't, then I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think. Really? In that case, I believe I am prepared to disclose the information you seek. You have made it crystal clear that you value trust over all else. I believe we are ready. Excellent. What is it? Now I can't bring myself to ask the client's name. If you can't ask it, Mr. Wright, then I will. Witness? What is the name of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Corrida? That person's name is... Adrian Andrews. What? Everybody explode! That's not who you told me it was earlier! Pray tell, what are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client, and it is Adrian Andrews. What? This can't be... on the phone earlier. What's going on here? My guess is that Mr. Killer just stabbed Mr. Edgeworth in the back. Stabbed Edgeworth in the back? Only I'm allowed to stab him in the back! I'm sure in order to get an audience with this court, Mr. De Killer told him a different name. Matt Ongard, perhaps. I'm sure he totally would have gotten on the witness stand had he said Dick Gumshoe. This is outrageous. I was deceived. This witness is telling a very serious lie. But you were the one who summoned this witness. <laughs> you shelly to kill her. My testimony is the truth. 
The defendant at the moment is Matt Ongart, am I correct? All I wish to do is help procure his acquittal. Hmm. Well, all of a sudden it feels like we can actually win this. But at what price, Mia? The prosecution has failed to provide a motive and has instead provided the suicide note, which is a forgery created by the victim. Furthermore, there is a possibility the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most definite of all, we have heard from the assassins himself the name of his client. Mr. the Killer's client who requested the murder was not the defendant at all. With all of this evidence, it is obvious to me that this means that Miss Matt Ungar is innocent. It seem I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Please, continue your discussion and call me when you have reached a verdict. Please bring Miss Adrian Andrews in immediately. Sorry, I'm being distracted by a throbbing pain in, my, in the tip of my small finger. That is so strange. With the way this is going, Ongard will be found innocent. This may be our last chance to save Maya. But... But Hedgeworth is right. The killer is lying. And Ongard... I know he's guilty. Can I live with myself if I win this? Who would have believed that the prosecution's own witness would absolve the defendant? Your Honor, the prosecution will request permission to further question the witness. Shelly de Keller is obviously lying under oath. It wasn't me. Listen, please, that testimony just now. It was all one big lie. Miss Andrews. The suicide note may have been a fake. But that man, he's the reason Celeste died. And Juan's death, it was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. That testimony just now, you have to believe me. It was a horrible, horrible lie. But Mr. DeKiller himself has testified. Do these people not know that everybody lies? Especially an assassin! Also, there's quite a bit of evidence that points to you. The knife and button donning the Michael Samurai's costume. You even have a motive. We know that Mr. Celeste Impacts was a large part of your life. You wanted to follow her, and you wanted revenge against the two who hurt you, her. I would say you have plenty of reasons to want them both dead. Truth. Mr. Wright? Y yes, Your Honor? I believe we have reached the end of this trial. Therefore, I ask the defense for any final words or opinions. I have to decide. Do I take the not guilty verdict and save Maya? Or do I throw this chance away and wait for Gumshoe's new evidence? What am I supposed to do? I honestly don't remember if this is a pointless option or if it actually does anything. But let's get this over with. Phoenix. I can't do it, Mia. I can't accept a not guilty. You are a lawyer. I know. But but Matt Ongard is a killer. A murderer. No, he isn't. I can't let him get away with this. I can't let someone else take the fall. If I let Miss Andrews be convicted, then I am no better than Ungard. 
and even though I don't want to admit it, I have to face the fact that it's because of Edward that I now know the real truth. He could have gotten on guard and con convicted so many times over, but he never took a single one of those chances. If I take this verdict right now, I'd be betraying his trust. His trust? I never thought about it until now. I... I trust him. So you've been boning him for years, but you didn't trust him. Eh, if it worked out for you guys up to now, then fine. But oh, Phoenix realizes his real feelings for Edgeworth. Your opinion, please. The defense requests that we be allowed to further question Mr. De Killer. Am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Raid? Right. But, but, that witness has cleared your client through his testimony. Your job here is done. I'm not done yet. To see through this witness's lies and find the truth. That is my job, Your Honor. There's still more evidence to look at. And I'm sure that once those pieces arrive here in this very courtroom, a miracle will occur. Very well. The trial will continue. Mr. Edgeworth, please re-establish connection with Mr. De Killer. How do they do that if they don't know where his part is? Right away, Your Honor. Has the verdict been reached? Before that, we would like to talk with you a little more. About? All you needed from me was the name of my client. What else could you need me for? Well, actually, we would like to hear everything you know about this case. That is, how things are usually done. What is he talking about? Usually done? But which shall we have his him testify about now. If you don't mind, please testify about your client in more detail. You legal people need procedures. Is it any wonder no one likes to go to court? I'd like going there, as a worker. As I have already stated quite a few times, Adrian Anders is my client. However, one thing I simply cannot overlook is tampering with the scene of the crime. My client did it to frame another for the crime, while pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene. Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Corrida was dead. But even more appalling is the creation and planting of the knife and button. That act is what I was referring to when I said my client had broken the rules. This is the most unexpected turn of events for the fifth time now. However, this time everything has finally been revealed. Just a second, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth? We still have the cross-examination to do. But you don't need to question testimony like this. Do you, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, the defense will question the witness. As if I have a choice here. Huh? Why? What this witness has said is nothing but beneficial to the defense's case. If you scrutinize the testimony, then... Then I'll expose the lies in that also beneficial testimony, I suppose. I don't understand what's going on anymore. That makes two of us. What is it, Mr. Wright? If I press him the wrong way, it might raise suspicions on his end. But I have to do something towards more time. Witness, about requesting a hit. Yes? How much is your fee? I see you are also quite a dark-hearted man, Mr. Attorney. 
huh? If you would like to talk business, we can do so after the trial. No, 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 no! I'm, I'm not thinking about hide. Mr. Wright. Yes. You, 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 you want to kill me? You want me dead, don't you? What? Why would you think something like that, Your Honor? Guilty, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You are here to declare guilty. I would think that most people wouldn't be able to overlook a person hiring another to kill. If I had a problem with such a thing, I wouldn't be very effective at my job. Uh, yeah. Well, a change in occupation might be good for you. However, I will say this. Even though I am the one that does the deed, my clients are always the real guilty party. That goes without saying, Mr. De Killer and their fate is to live with the knowledge of their guilt on their shoulders. I'm not even gonna bother. However, my client this time around thought that they could run away from their guilt. Are you talking about the button and the knife? Yes, and my business card. Oh, this card. So that no one has to waste their time, including the police. I always make it a point to make things as easy as possible. You try to make things easy? My business card makes it very easy to identify who carried out the service. He's pretty devoted to his work. But to disregard everything, to go and stab the deceased, deceased with a knife, and even hide my card from sight. That is something I cannot overlook. Uh, it's really hard to tell if he's being truthful or not without him being here. Who the hell do you think you are, Apollo Justice? So, you're saying most clients wouldn't do such a thing? That is correct. Usually, most people try to create an alibi for themselves. If you should use my services, Mr. Attorney, I would suggest you plan for your alibi, too. Uh, no, I already told you, I have no intention of ever using your services. Why does he keep looking at me like I'm the one on trial here? From the very beginning? That is correct. From before my client visited the room. All of my clients know precisely what the situation is at all times. I wonder if that's really true. That's odd. Objection! Thank you so much for taking the time to testify, Mr. Tequiller. What is the meaning of that attitude? When Adrian Andrews entered the victim's room... Your client had no idea that Juan Corrida had been murdered. But how, how do you know that? From the wine glass, Your Honor. The glass? Mr. De Killer supposed a client thought Mr. Corrida had merely fainted. Which is why this glass of tomato juice was poured for the victim. But isn't that just a part of Adrian Andrews' calculated plan? That is not possible, Your Honor. This glass bears the fingerprints of that person. Had this been planned, they would never have left their fingerprints behind. They could have to prove that they are innocent. I see your point. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? Strangely enough, I had the same so thought just now. How do you explain the strange phenomenon? Isn't it a waste of time to ask about such a minor detail? It's not a very important point anyway, correct? I'm afraid you are mistaken. If Adrian Andrews really is your client, as you claim, 
then your client should have had knowledge of Mr. Corrida's death. I wonder if Charlie the Killer tells him how he will murder them, or if the client tells him how to use how to murder the person they want. If not, then that can only mean that Adrian Anders was never your client at all. How strange. Yes? Why is it that the attorney has yet to raise an objection at this absurd situation? Phoenix, if the killer figures out what we're up to, we're in real trouble. Y yeah, I know. Objection! Mr. Edgeworth, I'm surprised. You know you can't say things like that without any evidence. Uh, sorry. That sounded like an awfully weak objection to me. Anyway, I am positive there was a contradiction in the testimony. The prosecution requests further testimony concerning when the request was made. Very well. Right now, I have to buy us more time. While we wait for the items the killer left behind to get here, I just know that the very outcome of this trial lies with those items. This request came to me, oh, about a week ago. It was a request for my services on the night of the awards ceremony. We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. That is what has occurred. I trust my memory, and I believe I have made no mistakes. So you physically met your client? That is correct. Meeting one's client is the first step to building trust, in my opinion. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. If I have to... One week ago? Are you sure? Yes, I am quite sure. I, of course, had my own preparations. And I was barely able to finish. When you're... When you request my services, Mr. Attorney, I hope you will keep that in mind. Please, stop. In any case, my client this time had a very specific date and time in mind. A specific date and time? Did you ask why on that specific night? No. I tried to fulfill all the conditions of my client's requests. But as for why, I only had my suspicions. Your suspicions, huh? So, what are these suspicions you had? Why did your client request that night? I'm sure it was all for the bear. The bear? My client spoke of it. I'm sure there will be a bear-shaped figurine in Mr. Juan Corrida's room. I would like you to retrieve that item for me. You must be talking about this bear puzzle. Inside that figurine was a suicide note. Naturally, the victim brought it with him to his hotel room. He was planning to publicly disclose its contents at the press conference, after all. That is correct. And if I had not done the job that night, I would not have known where the bear figurine was. I see... Um, no, I don't think it was important. What the killer said sounds plausible, but in the end, it's just his conjecture. No, Your Honor, I don't think it's very important. So you physically met Adrian Andrews, right? Of course I did. What was that? What was those brief pause? Witness, I would like for you to give us a few more details. I always meet my clients as a matter of principle. I have never taken a request by telephone or mail. And why is that? That's because I value the trust between a client and myself above all else. And the only way to establish that is to speak to the client while looking them in the eye.
If Mr. the Killer had met his client before the murder, then it's unlikely he is mistaken. So are you saying that this client really was Adrian Andrews? I... guess so. You see, it's just as I said. I'm so lost. Who the heck am I supposed to be helping here? Calm down, Phoenix. Sing carefully and relax. So, your client was Adrian Andrews? That is correct. Well, he says the two of them met. But if they did, then there shouldn't be anything wrong with the killer's testimony. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything strange this time around. You have to draw more information from him, but you can't draw suspicion. If you can do that, you should be able to find a flaw in the testimony somewhere. Talk about a delicate balance. Probably just my imagination. I need to find something more definite to catch this guy on. Can we believe that your testimony up to this point has been reliable? <sighs> I know there was a trick in this um, part of the thingy. Why he meets his client isn't important, and that wasn't the point. Please stop sidestepping my questions. What do you mean by that? My question was, did you really meet Adrian Andrews in person? I have already told you, Mr. Wright. I did. It was only through talking with him face to face that I began to trust him. That's what I thought. I can trust this person as a client. It's true what they say about talking face to face. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony important? Yes. If I heard what I think I heard just now... Then I think I've got him. Your Honor, I believe the testimony just now was of the utmost importance. Really? If that's the case... Please include the statement just now in your testimony. Very well. I would like to go over this one more time. <sighs> yes, we always have to go something over several times. You met Adrian Andrews at a bar and took the request at that time? Yes, that is correct. And that's when you thought he was trustworthy. How many times must I repeat myself? Yes, that is correct. I'm sorry. But that is an impossible tale. What? Shelley de Keller. You have never met the real Adrian Andrews. Why would you say that? Because you made one very big slip-up. About her. So what is the issue? What did you just say? About her? If you had ever met Adrian Anderson in person, one look would have told you that she is a woman. Oh! What is the meaning of this? This witness testified to the following, that he always meets his meets face to face with his clients when taking their request. But he has never met Adrian Andrews in person. Yes, Your Honor. That is exactly the point. That means Mr. De Keller's client could not have been Miss Adrian Andrews. I just want to say something. If he doesn't take requests by mail or phone, how do they ever meet up to talk about the request? Unless he gets mail that says, Mr. De Keller, I have... 
an inquiry or a desire to question you about your profession, and then they meet and reveal that they have a request. That looks disgusting. Mr. Edgeworth, I understand your logic in this one. However, why would the assassin make such a basic mistake? I believe it has to do with her name, Your Honor. Her name? Yes, Adrian Andrews is, without a doubt, a very androgynous name. Yes, I see. Unluckily for Mr. DeKiller, the entire time he was on the stand, no one had stated Miss Andrews, Adrian Andrews' gender. And so he simply picked the wrong gender to begin with. 50-50 chance and you get it wrong. What... what is going on? This court demands an explanation. I think somehow I must have mixed up this client with another. So does that mean you remember something different now? Yes, of course. Please, if you would allow me to testify once more. Uh, I know he's just going to spit out more lies. Yes, now remember, I took that request by mail. There have been times when I took a job without having met my client. The request was for the murder of Juan Corrida and two or three other small things. When I saw the name at the end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. So you took this job through a letter? He didn't mention anything about a letter in his earlier testimony. Maybe that testimony was also a lie? Do you think? Which means he is definitely lying. Be careful, Phoenix. If you break the assassin's testimony completely, it's over for us. I know, I can't make him suspicious, but I think we're okay. Like we can do this. As long as he's standing there across from me. No matter how strong of a punch I throw, he'll counter it. Everybody stare at Edgeworth with the love-filled eyes now. But didn't you just say that you always meet your clients? Yes, I suppose I did say that. However, there are some clients for whom a meeting is simply not possible. But didn't you meet your client this time? No, I did not. Oh, come now. Let's start with this game of cat and mouse. Using your silkiest voice is not going to work on me. Alright then, just cough it up and confess. Mr. Wright, you can't badge your wits with such harsh words. I have some pretty harsh words for this game right now. Um... You're a lawyer, so behave like one present evidence instead of mindlessly yelling. Do you have any proof that Mr. Killer met with his client? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I don't have any proof. Then your line of questioning was just another waste of time. Sadly for us, Your Honor, that is the nature of right and wrong. Ha! It's a joke on his name! And why could you not meet certain clients? Recently, I've been receiving more requests. If I met each and every client, I would lose some nice business opportunities. Nice business opportunities? On top of which, the times have changed. It is now the age of information and computers, correct? Well, I've joined the Times and now take requests via electronic mail. Electronic mail? Do you have to mail it in a special insulated env envelope? I'm very sorry. I despise the shortening of words. What I meant by electronic mail is what is commonly referred to as email. So... 
Anybody care to guess what his mail address is? Give me your suggestions in the comments. I'd like to see what his email address could be. Email? In a contest of mimicry, the judge would beat a parrot, hands down. So does that mean I have to cross-examine him? Two or three other things? Yes. And what were those other things? A few other things that have nothing to do with this case. What should I do? Should I let him slide with that? It'd be really bad if I push his buttons the wrong way and he gets mad. Whether or not they're related to this case is for the court to decide. Mr. Attorney? Yes. Everything I have said from the beginning has been nothing but beneficial to your client. Which is why I wonder what is pushing you to continue with this cross-examination. Could it be that you are planning to betray your own client? Th that's... I smell the stench of a backstabber. And should you turn out to be one... W wait! Oh no, this is looking really bad. I shouldn't press my luck. But I have to think, is this worth pursuing? I'm still trying very hard to keep my patience. I'm not doing a very good job at it. This is a very important matter. Please, cooperate and tell us what the other jobs your requ client requested were. If it's truly that important, I suppose I don't have much of a choice. The bear figurine. The bear figurine? After the assassination of the target, I was to find that figurine. I was told that this job was just as important as the actual killing. And where was the figurine? It was inside Mr. Corrida's suitcase. And what did you do then? I handed it over to my client right away. You gave it to your client? Interesting. This information certainly sounds important to me. Witness, please include what you just stated in your testimony. As you wish. I found this figuring at Mr. Ongard's mansion. If you gave it to Miss Andrews, then what was it doing there? I was waiting for her there. That was also part of the plan, to frame Mr. Ongard, I'm sure. That makes a lot of sense. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any problems with this piece of testimony? I'm thinking. One second. I don't think so. It's no use. As long as I can't put my finger on the central problem here, pressing this witness anymore would be extremely dangerous. It appears that Mr. Wright has no problems. So, you're saying that you never saw your client's face? Not even once? I did. Once. It was when I went to give my client the figurine. Yes, I see. But Miss Andrews was wearing a mask at the time. A mask? The Nickel Samurai mask, I'm guessing. Yes? One thing does sort of stick out to me, Your Honor. I think you most definitely saw your client's face. Let's recall Mr. Powers' testimony. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. Matt gave the bellboy a tip. 
you received quite a large roll of cash from a stone god. And at the time, he was not wearing his Nickel Samurai mask. Ooh. Now that you mention it, I do remember that. Witness! Yes, that night I did wander the floor as a bellboy. I received plenty of tips that night for carrying juice to the various rooms. Is that so wrong? Huh? The man who gave me that tip was not my client. He was probably just a very generous person. I'm sorry, but sadly we are not nearly so generous here. If I could receive large rows of cats by simply bringing people things on trays, then why on earth would I stand here prosecuting? I'll say it again. Prosecutors seem to get a lot of cash in this world. Uh, the déjà vu. Isn't salary more than enough for one man? Well, he does have to be your sugar daddy. And pay for all the crap that Maya eats, and probably pearls too, with the circus you took her to. So yes, he needs some extra cash, not just for himself, but also to... Spoil you. And where is your evidence that the large roll of cash was not, in fact, a tip? Come, Mr. Edgeworth, show me the money. Yeah, shake your money maker. Mr. Attorney. Yes? You know, I think your line of questioning has been a little strange. In fact, I would say you don't seem to believe Miss Andrews is my client. Oh, no, it's not like that at all. I just think lies are the good thing, you know? Oh, I know and agree. Lies are not a good thing at all. Uh, uh. I think we are on the same page now, aren't we, Mr. Attorney? Remember, if I feel threatened in any way, I am free to cut contact at any time. I'm sorry, please forgive my foolishness! If only you were this apologetic all the time. I do not see a huge contradiction here. Therefore, you may continue, witness. We've pretty much reached the end of our rope here. Seems like we're still okay to me. And that's exactly what is so bad. At the rate we're going, we'll end up completely destroying Mr. The Killer's lie. If we do that, we already know how serious a situation that will put us in. Oh yeah. All I can do now is pray that those items reach us in time. No prolonging. The testimony will not bring the items faster. Wait, what was my plan here? Uh, let's press again. So, De Killer says he gave the figurine to Miss Andrews. But I know somewhere in that statement there is a contradiction. And yet, I know that if we present something trivial here, he will cut the con connection on his end. If you want to make a strong point, Phoenix, you have to present strong evidence. She's right. Now what, Dr. Wright? Witness, let's go over this one more time. Stop repeating stuff back at me! You gave Miss Andrews the bear figurine. And she told you to take the bear and wait for her at Ongard Mansion. Is that correct? Yes. Where are you going with this? Well, I think maybe you might have remembered a few things incorrectly. What? This is a battle of wits. I can't let up on him. I don't think it is possible for Miss Andrews to have been the recipient of this bear. Shelley the Killer. If you had really given the bear to Miss Andrews, then this item should not have been inside it. 
this item. I see where you're going. That's where I'm going. Where is everyone going? Do I need to pack up the suitcase? Please, think back to Miss Andrews' testimony. And I was going to burn it. For her sake. If even for a single minute, this bear had actually been in Miss Andrews' hands. I'm sure she would have taken the suicide note out and burned it. So that's where you two were going. So by the very fact that this suicide was still inside the bear, tells us that your client didn't know how to disassemble the puzzle. Which means? It means, Your Honor, that it is impossible for Adrian Andrews to be the client. Boo Mr. Phoenix Wright? I am sure I mentioned this before. How I hate traitors above all else. I think your cross-examination has clearly demonstrated something to me. You must wish to break your end of our agreement. N no, that's not... That's enough. If that is your intention, that is only one thing left for me to do. Wait, please! Gentlemen, ladies, please excuse me. I have a matter that I must attend to. N no, please! No, not that! Please, wait! Mr. Turney, bring this trial to a speedy end and I will stay my hand. Otherwise... <laughs> Where the... Mr. Wright? Are you... Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. I didn't understand this witness's outburst just now. Do you think there is a need to hear my testimony, or is this enough? Well, we should... Edgeworth, we can't do this. If we keep this up, Maya... she'll... Oh my god, Phoenix. Fuck Maya, okay? Nobody in my gaming community, or in my very close gaming community, and I mean very close gaming community, cares about Maya. We don't care about Maya. She can burn for all we care. Grow some balls and do your fucking job. The prosecution... What has come over, everyone? Even you are... The prosecution... rests. What is going on around here? The prosecution has no further questions, Your Honor. The... What? Well, I never thought I'd see the day. This is a most unusual situation. If the prosecution rests with no further questions, then the prosecution has failed to uphold its stance. If that is the case, then even though I am reluctant, I must believe that Mr. DeKiller's testimony is accurate. That would mean that Shelley DeKiller's client is... Adrian Andrews. <laughs> Mr. Wright, Yes, Your Honor. If I end the trial here, right now, then your client, Matt Ongard, will be declared innocent. And in his place, Adrian Andrews would be charged with murder. Miss Andrews... would be charged with murder? The prosecution has no further questions, so we will now hear the defense's final remarks. Bailiff, please bring the defendant, Matt Ungart, to the stand. The items from the killer's hideout didn't make it in time. We tried as hard as we could, but it looks like our time has run out. I can't believe it. The outcome now lies in your hands.
Dude, did the old guy finally decide? To be honest, I can't think of you as a truly innocent and good person. You have done enough evil to drive a woman to suicide. But, at least on the charge of murder, it would appear you are innocent. Hmm. And you reveal your evil side because you don't give a fuck about your refreshing as a spring breeze image anymore? You know, the reason why you killed Corrida, so nothing would ruin your reputation? I don't get it! So I guess even the old fuddy duddy figured it out. Mr. Ellengard? You were atrocious as a lawyer, weren't you? Giving your client away like this. And that refreshing like a spring breeze crap. It's just as atrocious, don't you agree? Anyway, get on with it and pronounce me innocent already. Right, Mr. Lawyer? Should I side with justice? Or should I save Maya's life? You'd better get Ungath a guilty sentence, okay? But... But... If I did that... Maya will die! But if I say he's innocent... Then Miss Andrews will be charged as a murderer! By the way, I just realized that the sprite... In this way makes Adrian look very much like Sarah Brind from Virtual Fighter. Of course she wears different pants, but still, from the waist up. Do I say he's guilty or not guilty? Either choice I make, someone's life is going to end. It all hinges on what I choose. Now then, Mr. Reid, let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. If the person who hired the assassin was Adrian Andrews, then your client, Matt Ongard, is innocent. Hm. There's no need to ask, old man. After all, my lawyer is going to say what I want, aren't you? Right. I can't... I can't do this! I have to decide something. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. My client, Matt Ongard, is... As I've said it before, he is not actually a murderer. In the eyes of the law, he would be not guilty of murder. He would be an accomplice to murder, or an instigator of murder, but not a murderer himself. So? Not guilty, although it doesn't really matter what I say here. You'll see. Oh, stop trying to be the final scene. We're waiting for your answer, Mr. Wright. I've been waiting for the end of this for a long time. Matt Ongar, your client deserves an answer. I deserve a medal for finishing this case. Maya, I'm sorry. Matt Ongar is... Objection, bitch! Francisca von Karma? What are you doing? Oh. You see now, don't you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? This is exactly why you should never take your eyes off of that scruffy fool. Did you bring them? The final pieces? Do you have them? You should know better than to ask that, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. A fun karma is perfect in every way. The evidence is in perfect condition. Don't worry about Scruffy. He's fine, and his injuries are minor. All of the actions are inside this. What a filthy old coat this is. That's gumshoes. I can spot his tattered rags anywhere. I apologize for his ugliness, but there was nothing else to wrap the items in. I fought long and hard this whole trial. All for what is inside that raggedy coat. I'm sure that inside that coat lies a crucial piece of evidence. Your Honor, inside that filthy coat are the defense's final pieces of evidence. Illegally obtained ones. 
which is why they are the defenses. And totally legal. This trial is already over. All that remains is for me to hand down my verdict. Shut up, Judge. I do not believe that any evidence presented now would change the outcome of this trial. What? Your Honor, it is our duty to examine every piece of evidence down to the last. I request that Miss Fonkama be allowed to present these pieces of evidence. Of course he's right. How would this one obvious rule applies here? If these items do not bring up any new points, then they will not be accepted by this court. Miss Fonkama, if you please. These pieces of evidence are the items left by the killer during his escape from the police. He must have been in quite a rush. Yes, Your Honor. The killer left three pieces of evidence. Somewhere among the evidence we're about to see, there will be something that will turn this whole situation around. Like a miracle. I'm sure of it. That is all we can hope for. The first item is a pistol. Does the killer's pistol have anything to do with this case? Sure, let's always ask for details. Details are fun. Does the pistol have any relation to this case? We have yet to perform a ballistics test, so I can't say anything for certain. However, I believe it has something to do with this case, at least to me. That's the pistol that he used to shoot you, isn't it? That's what I believe. Yes. Oh. I kept the bullet they removed from my shoulder as a sort of a memento. I'm sure it will be an excellent sample for the test. So that's the pistol that was used to shoot Francesca. It's probably not going to help us very much. The second piece of evidence is this videotape. I bet the killer took that from Ongard Mansion. Have you checked the contents of that tape? Unfortunately, there was no time to... Oh yeah. But I would speculate that this tape is very important. Why would you say that? Because he came back to his hideout for it. D the killer went back for it? That's right. It looks like he was trying to recover it. He injured three of the officers at the site. But somehow, it looks like they managed to protect it from the killer. Shelly the killer is no ordinary man. The last piece of evidence is this bellboy's uniform. Is that a uniform from the Gatewater Hotel? Was that used during the crime? I am almost certain it was. There's even a pair of black leather gloves in one of the pockets. There's no doubt about it. The killer was wearing this on the night of the murder. There is one thing I found interesting about this uniform. And what is that? There is a button missing on this uniform. A button? It's a very unique button. I'm sure if we were to recover it, it would prove us with an interesting clue. I don't remember this button ever being mentioned, but then it is a red herring. It's really not important. That is all I have to present, Your Honor. It's just as I thought. And what is that, Your Honor? I'm sure were we under normal circumstances, these items from Shelley de Keller's title would be very important clues. However... My question is not who did the killing, it is who was the client. Yes, that is correct. And these three items do not tell us anything about that. Thank you for your hard work, Miss Von Karma. You may step down now. Wait, Your Honor. Please, allow me to examine this new evidence. Overruled. This court already has all the evidence it needs to hand down a verdict. Wonderful. Absolutely splendid. 
This judge is a brilliant man, isn't he? Is this the end? Phoenix. I know it. There's no such thing as a miracle in this world, is there? I think you're wrong. I think they do exist. But you have to make the miracle happen. You've come this far. You can't give up now. But... but... no matter how you think about it... It's... Try. For my sake. Just think about it for a second. Why should I bother doing anything for you if I'm already not doing anything for Maya? There are two ways out of this situation for us. Two? The first. Make on garde wish from the bottom of soul for a guilty verdict. Huh? The killer will always place his client's wishes first. If Ongard himself wishes to be convicted, Nanny will let his hostage go. That may be true, but that's asking me to do the impossible. The second way. Force the killer to end his contract with Ongard. If the killer were to no longer think of Ongard as his client, then he would let Maya go. Mia, that's even more impossible. He's a man who values his duty towards his clients above all else. I know both of these seem like impossible feats at first. But if you could make either one happen, it would truly be a miracle. The bigger problem is... The judge has already said he doesn't need any more evidence. The pieces he was just shown, he's not accepting them. Phoenix. Think things through from the other side. Isn't that what has always worked for us? Haha, <laughs> we have snuck in the Japanese translation of the title again. We are so clever. The Dutch says he doesn't need the evidence. If that's the case, then who does need it? The person who needs the evidence. The defense, prosecution, and the judge. We have seen all the pieces of evidence. Now that is how we've come to the truth. But there are people who haven't seen them all. And those people do not know the truth. That truth may be what will bring about the miracle in the end. There are no objections this time, correct? I will pronounce my verdict. Why don't we all respectfully sit back and listen, kids? I have already told you, Mr. Wright. This court does not need any more evidence. I am not saying it is us that needs the evidence, Your Honor. Then you want to show the evidence to that person? Yes, Your Honor. Please, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, for you to ask with such passion, I will grant you one chance. W one chance? Please show your evidence to who you think is the right person. That's impossible to turn the situation around in one try. One try, the Dizola will permit. I have to try to remember. Everything that has happened up to this point. Think, Phoenix, think! There must be a way to save Maya while taking Ongar down at the same time. No then, Mr. Wright. Let's not waste any more time. Who would you like to show evidence to? Okay, here's the thing. This case has two endings. A good and a bad one. In the good one, we have to show something to the killer and we have to sow something certain to him. Anything else to a different person will result in the bad ending. The bad ending is basically failing to turn things around, and Ongard gets off scot-free, Maya gets released, but Phoenix never meets her again because he goes away and doesn't work as a lawyer anymore, and Adrian Andrews is eventually convicted for murdering Juan. I will not show this because, one, if you are in this kind of position, you can't save anymore, 
So if I do the wrong thing, I would have to go through the entire part of this case again. And it's very annoying. But when I first played this game, I went for the bad ending first and I got it on purpose. And what I did was I showed Miles my attorney's badge. Why? Mostly because I thought it was very nice symbolism. Phoenix showing Edgeworth his badge as a sort of resignation of giving up on being a lawyer. However, the proper thing to do is to pick Shelly to kill her. And what we want to show to him. This is kind of the tricky part, because what we have to show him is the videotape. And I quite honestly think that the videotape is a terrible piece of evidence. Not just because of the way that we obtained it, but because the contents is unknown. I can understand either Gumshoe the police or Francisca checking it out since they were busy either finding it or getting it to this place. But nobody seems to think, hey, Mr. Judge, we don't even have to do a recess, just get a bailiff to bring in a VCR and we can check what the videotape is. Because this shouldn't work. For all we know, that video is simply bathroom bloopers number three. It could be useless. It could be useless to the case. We don't know. We don't know what is on it. So really, this is a terrible piece of evidence. But yes, it's the correct thing to show. Well, what do you think, Mr. Hitchworth? Um... I think there is some merit in showing this evidence to that witness. Bailiff, please bring in the transceiver from earlier. Alright. Oh, it looks like they got a hold of him. Maya, she's okay, right? Didn't I tell you to concern yourself with bringing about a speedy end to this trial? Now, if I understand correctly, you wish to show me a piece of evidence? Yes, one is all I need. I have here a videotape. It was found at your hideout. I heard you injured three officers in your attempt to get this back. That was most regrettable. However, it was an order from my client. I was told to protect that videotape. I thought so. I'm afraid I seem to have failed in that regard. Do you know the contents of this tape? I was sternly told by my client to not watch it. So I've absolutely no idea. Actually, you're, you are on this tape. Me? There was a video camera hidden at the crime scene. Your actions were being recorded. What? Is it true? Mr. Wright? Who was it that planted a camera? Well, the only person who could have placed the camera at the scene of the crime would be your client, naturally. That was Adrian Andrews. Be quiet and listen, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Your client specified a place and time for you, isn't that right? Yes. That was so they could film you. I had no idea. Mr. Wright? Why would my client do such a thing? I would like to know why. Why did Matt Ongard film the crime scene? The reason why he did that is my ticket out of this whole mess. There is only one reason why your client would secretly film the crime scene. Your client once told me something very interesting. We were talking about you, and this is what they said. But I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone. Least of all assassins. 
Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Assassins aren't above blackmail. Yes, that's where the video comes in. With that, I can keep him at bay and even blackmail him if I want. Your client didn't trust you at all. They were thinking of using this video to blackmail you. What do you have to say to that, Shelly the Killer? It looks like I was being deceived from the very beginning. Yes, by a natural. That is the kind of person they are. Your client is a person who only thinks and plots of how to use the people around them to protect themselves from any and all dangers that may arise. That is the true nature of your client. I have one question for the witness. You told us one thing numerous times during your testimony. You said that you detest traitors most of all. Yes, that's right. But what if that traitor was your own client? What would you do then? That's obvious. I would break our contract in that case. And then... That client would become my next target. For the honor of the De Killer name, even if it takes an eternity, I would follow that person to the ends of the earth to exact my punishment. I see. That's all I wanted to know. So the traitor becomes the killer's next target. I get it. This is how we'll turn this case around. Mr. Wright? Yes? My contract with my client is over as of now. I seem to have a new job on my hands. I will now return to you your precious item. What? I'm not an item? Maya, I thought I'd never see you again. Well, you're not seeing her up to now. So you can't really say that you're seeing her again. Oh, thank goodness. Hooray, I guess. Um, this trial appears to have come to its conclusion. However, I actually am sort of... I don't quite know what just happened there with the client and the witness. Oh! Miss Moncama, where did the... She always has you in her sights. Now, I do believe it's time to finally hand down a verdict. Mr. Ongar, it looks like somehow you got what you wanted. You will finally receive the acquittal you wanted so badly. You should be happy. But before that, I would like to make one final statement. Sometime in the near future, one very betrayed assassin may appear before you. Needless to say, that man is very good at what he does. I'm sure you would understand what I mean if you watched the video. <sighs> Help me. Now then, Your Honor, the verdict, if you please. Is this all right with you, Mr. Wait? We have finally reached the end of a very long battle. Too long. Whether he's convicted or acquitted, there is no escape for him now. Go on, Phoenix. Plead whichever way your heart tells you. For me, he is an accomplice and not actually guilty of murder. So, he is not guilty. Congratulations, Mr. Matt on God. Please make sure to savor every moment of what little time you have left. Your Honor, as always, the defense pleads not guilty. Very well. This court finds a defendant met on guard. <laughs> Please wait. What's the matter? If, if I get a not guilty, I'll, I'll be 
guild. I, I'm. I'm guilty. I know a lot of people said that they found this disgusting or were scared by that sprite. I never was. I thought it was too harmless. As always, it looks like we have uncovered the real truth. We? I don't remember you helping out much in this. Shut up, Phoenix! Mr. Edgeworth? How is Madonga? I have left Miss Von Kalma in charge of his incarceration. I'm sure he's getting a full course meal of whip leather right about now. Very good. That was a close one, wasn't it, witness? Yes. I plan to pay my debt to a society with my own crime, Your Honor. This trial was the first time I had stood on the witness stand, and when I did, I really felt hopeless. She must be talking about the time Edgeworth really went after her. I guess she's trying to forgive him for what he did. Why do people think they have to forgive something? Yeah, we remember he was pretty freaking awesome there, but nobody cares. But after that, when I was alone at the detention center, that's the first time I really saw myself and who I am. A weak person, right? And today, when the two of you used your combined strength to convict Matt, I, I felt like I had finally been saved. Wow, this is the first time I've ever seen a smile. I am really happy that you two were in charge of this case. I really don't know how to express how I feel at this moment. This is... This is the first time I've felt comfortable with myself, with who I am. Thank you so much, everyone. It looks like we have resolved everything at last. As for myself, there are still a few things I'm confused about. But everyone seems to be in good spirits. And that is good enough for me. That is all. This court is adjourned. You are great out there, Phoenix. What I did out there was... right, wasn't it? This is the first time you've not gotten your client off. You got them a guilty verdict this time. I pleaded not guilty! If my client suddenly wants to be guilty, that's not my fault. So technically, I didn't lose. But you have to look past all of that to what's really important. You now realize that there is something more than just getting a not guilty, right? Yes, I understand now. Phoenix, think back for a second. Think to the moments before Ms. Kam arrived with the final pieces of evidence. Think about the incredible decision you had to make. Yes, please, allow me to flash back to that because... It's so goddamn important, I totally forgot about it. Is he guilty, or is he not guilty? Those were your choices then, and your answer. Your answer spoke to what being a lawyer means to you. Right. Edgeworth. I have good news. Maya is now safe in police custody. Really? For You're telling us the truth, right, Mr. Edgeworth? Y yes, she's quite safe. She is on her way here as we speak in a patrol car. Mystic Maya is safe! You did it! You really did it, Mr. Nick! Ow! She punches deceptively hard for a kid. I... I believed in you. I kept saying to myself, Mr. Nick will save her. Mr. Nick will save her. I believe in fairies if I clap. Oh, um, thanks. What's wrong? Miss Von Kama. Um, about earlier, 
Thanks. Ow! Why are you still smiling, Mr. Phoenix Wright? You... you lost! Your perfect win record has now been crushed. And yet, you are still happy? I don't think you'll ever understand, Miss Von Karma. How dare you! Don't worry. She may in time. After all, I was like that myself until a year ago. Edgeworth? For my own personal victories and for guilty verdicts. I used every dirty trick in the book, and so my win record remained spotless. But... A man appeared and stood fast against that selfish me. I fought him in my usual manner, and tasted my first defeat. My first... viscous, salty-tasting defeat. I felt like I had lost everything because of that. Yeah, Edgeworth is being kind of me about this right now, but I am totally okay with that. It was my turn to sit in the defendant's chair. Still my favorite case. And I was saved by that person I called my enemy. I couldn't forgive myself for all that had happened, so I left the prosecutor's office. And I left that note. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death. Hm. As well you should have. A prosecutor who has shamed himself with defeat should crawl into a hole and die. But that was not what happened. After I left the prosecutor's office, I finally came to realize something. And it was in that moment of clarity that everything began to change. What foolish nonsense. We prosecutors use anything we can to detect the defendant. But every time we did so... No matter how desperate the situation, instead of giving up like most people, that man would hold strong with his undying faith. Yeah, what is it with making the heroes always too dumb to give up? You know, it's really annoying after a while. You're like, oh my god, you're still going? I mean, optimism is all nice and all, but once you're really at the end of your rope, you'd think that finally give up. And continue onwards is not good at that point. Just makes him look stupid. And then, before I knew it, I began to trust in that man as well. I'm pretty sure you thrust into that man as well. Heh <laughs> heh. What? You trusted your enemy? It doesn't matter how many underhanded tricks a person uses. The truth will always find a way to make itself known. The only thing we can do is to fight with the knowledge we hold and everything we have. Erasing the paradoxes one by one. It's never easy. We claw and scratch for every inch. But we will always eventually reach that one single truth. This, I promise you. The truth... Yes. That's the reason why prosecutors and defense lawyers exist. But I'm sure you knew that already, didn't you, right? That's why you couldn't forgive me, this man who went into hiding. Isn't that right? This man who only had his sights set on victory, who ran away into the night. Is, is Mr. Edwards right, Mr. Nick? You really let me down. When you disappeared, I felt betrayed. You just left without a farewell note, without even explaining why you were breaking up with me. The reason I decided to become a lawyer to begin with was because I believed in the things you said to me all those years ago. And you... you betrayed your own words. That's why, a year ago, I made up my mind. I decided that the Miles Edgeworth I knew had died. At least, that's what I told myself. You pathetic fool! Miss Von Karma! I don't want to hear the wretched whimpering of a disgraced loser! 
Afon Karma is someone who is destined to be perfect. Miles Edgeworth, you are no longer worthy. You are no longer worthy of being a Fun Karma. I don't think he ever wanted to be to begin with. He was always O Edgeworth. If he had taken the Fun Karma name, then I might understand that. And neither am I. It's over. It's all over. Francesca threw something on the ground just now. This is an electromagnetic receiver. Isn't that the thing she used to track Detective Gumshoe? I'll return this to the present later. There's something else. Isn't that Miss Von Karma's whip? I'll never set foot in another courtroom again. I'm sure that's what she's saying by this action. You should keep this right. Oh yeah, I'll keep it. I'll keep until it's the right time. Maya! Mystic Maya! Oh, Nick! I knew you would come through! You got Anga convicted, like I knew you would! And on top of that, you even rescued me! Well, of course I did. You know I would never desert you. But we sure press our luck this trial. You're really lucky to be standing here. Whatever, whatever. Look, it's over, okay? Besides, if I did croak, I would just come back and haunt you like a bad ghost through Pearly. Is it really that easy to do something like that? Thanks a lot, Nick. Uh, don't mention it. Maya? Oh! Mr. Edgeworth! Um, I'm relieved you're alright. Hey, it looks like you've made some real progress, Mr. Edgeworth! Um, well, I suppose I'm a little different from who I was a year ago. <laughs> alright! I think it's time we got out of this depressing place. Huh? Where are we going? Food, Nick! Food! Grub! Chow! I'm starved! I'm so hungry, even you look like a nice juicy burger and a bun to me, Nick. He does have nice buns. Y you think I look like a burger? I'm a prime rib, at least. Come with us, Mr. Edwards, please! Um, if you insist. Alright, so how about we hit up our usual burger joint? Don't be silly, Nick! Huh? This case messed up that awesome evening and got in the way of my gourmet food! So I've decided we have to make it up by having another feast! Uh, another feast? Come on, Nick! Food! Hey, pal. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Gumshoe, are you alright? Yeah, but I'm really embarrassed. I didn't think I would hit a telephone pole, of all things. A telephone pole? Then it wasn't a red light that got him? Yeah, I did it again, said a boy. I felt like my dear Wahal was gonna give out on me, and I ain't joking. Yeah, it was more exciting than the very last episode of the Steel Samurai. Th thanks. Now, looky here, Mr. Snooty Prosecutor. Don't you write me a bell bullet, Mr. Rat, too hard? If you don't start being a lot nasty, him, you might just kick it. Tonight, even! Um, I'll keep that in mind. Wow, well, come on now. Everyone gather around. Y'all are gonna get your picture taken by a genuine professional photographer. Looks like Lana bought herself a new camera. Well, pal, at least we can put this messy case behind us now. Come on, tonight's all about eating, so let's go chow down, pal. Amen to that, pal! Amen! You know, when you think about it, you are the one who saved the day, Detective. Uh, me? You really think so? He's right. If it wasn't for the three items you took, I think this trial would have had a very different ending. Oh, well, you know, it's... <laughs>
Hmm? Wait. That's odd. When I ran off with the things from the killer's hideout, I was sure I took four things to to in total, sir. What? Four? Yeah, I'm sure I put one of the items in my coat pocket. There was a fourth item? Ah, come on, y'all. It's over. But who, boy, I'll tell you, you really ate something else. Between getting accused of murder and getting kidnapped, never a dull moment with you, huh? <laughs> you think? It wasn't a compliment, Maya. Why does she look so happy about that? But being shut away for two whole days. Weren't you scared? Yeah, it was really scary. I felt so hopeless. I'd just like to point something out. I'm not an expert on medical things, but after two days of starvation, her stomach is smaller now. You know. Didn't eat much. It, she probably used resources to keep herself going and all. So really, even if she's really hungry, she shouldn't and wouldn't be able to eat a giant feast because her stomach would have shrunk and she can't eat a lot. What she should do is start with soup. You know, something that fills her up, but doesn't force her some stomach to go suddenly go from 0 to 360 after two days of not doing anything. She is gonna have such stomach cramps, diarrhea, and maybe even vomiting for the next few hours. So to keep my mind off things, I drew a picture. Sounds like you, you had a rough gal. So what is the picture of yours? Yeah, I want to see it. I want to see Mr. Maya's picture. Uh, you know, I don't know where it went. Oh, that's too bad. Well, it's alright. It wasn't anything important anyway. Uh, it sure is nice to finally see them both smiling again. What is it, Edgeworth? This thing is picking something up. Oh, that's Miss Von Kalma's receiver. Ugh, thanks to her, I had the most awful experience of my life, so... I can't believe she stuck a tracking device on me. That's odd. Even though you're standing right here, the tracking device seems to be in a different location. Oh, it's probably busted or something, sir. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm afraid it's about time for me to excuse myself. I still have some work to do. Huh? But Mr. Edgeworth, you haven't even eaten anything yet. And you've eaten way too much, you glutton. I had fun tonight. Now if you excuse me. Wait. What? I just want to say... Thanks, Edgeworth. You really saved me out there. If anyone should be saying thanks, it should be me, right? I feel like words alone aren't enough here. I wonder if there's anything I can give him to express how I feel. I can think of a lot of things you can give him to really express your feelings. What's this? A little... toy for later on? Thank you. It's all thanks to you, too. You... and her. You don't need to thank me. I was only doing my job. It looks like Mr. Hedgeworth has left, Mr. Nick. Hey, Mystic Maya? Hmm? Yes, Pearly? I guess you two can go back to being lovey-dovey, right? They weren't lovey-dovey beforehand, why should that be it now? Ugh. You and Mr. Nick, I mean. Pearly, would you cut it out already? You're embarrassing me! Um, anyway. So, who's paying for this lovely dinner party? As if you need to ask. Everyone say thank you to Nick! Huh? Oh, yeah. I'm kinda at the point where I can't even buy instant noodles, pal. So I can't already put your name on the bill. Huh? Huh? Yeah, I got me a situation just like that myself. 
There's this camera shop in this hotel, see? And I just bought myself the good old beauty here. It'd be better with you anyhow for $3,000. Huh? Huh? <laughs> huh? Actually, I reckon you bought it for me since it's on your tab and all. Huh? <laughs> huh? Isn't this great, Mr. Nick? Yeah, Nick! Why do I suddenly feel like screaming? Ah, you don't need to hold back now, you hear? Yeah, pal. Time to let it all out. I don't think he means that kind of yelling. This is going to be the first time I hear the real you! Go on! It's been a while since I heard you say it. I've been busy being a hostage and all. All right, then. If you say so. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. There we go. Anyway, that was not just Case 2-4, but also the entire Justice for All game. You really came through for me, Nick. I had to hide that letter, but I knew you'd find it. I really feel like I've been living on the edge lately. I mean, I've escaped death three times now. Pretty cool, huh? I feel like a pro. The game is... it's okay. It can be fun. It was a decent first one for me. I'm so happy that you could save Mystic Maya, Mr. Nick. And I'm so happy for the two of you. Speaking of, I think this hotel's a popular place for honeymooners. So I sort of made reservations for the two of you, just in case. Pearl is an adorable character. But her constant Maya Nick thing is getting very, very annoying. Well, pal, it looks like I'm back on the force again. Mr. Edgeworth had a long talk with the chief, and he got me reinstated for my sake. I heard he said things like, letting that one go is bad for all of society. I knew it. Crashing headlong into everything is the only way to live, pal. Also, the more I play the game, the more I like Gumshoe. He's a fun character, although the fact that, you know, the joke of him getting his pa salary cut... Kind of not funny. I, Maggie Bird, am retiring this uniform as of today, sir. I'm going to be a witness from now on. And bring smiles and joy to the people who come by the restaurant, sir. I hope you'll stop by sometime, Mr. Wright. But yeah, this case just drags on way too long. Mm, yes. Are you here to visit a patient? Mm -mm. I'm Dr. Wright, Director Hardy. Ho ho ho. Recently, mm, yes. The girl, you know, I haven't seen her around. Mm, yes. But I remember, if I even laid so much as an eye on her, it would go crack. Mm, it didn't matter if I got whipped, though. Mm, yes. Ho ho ho. As I've said before, that videotape shouldn't have been a proper evidence piece. It was pointless. It's time to begin our quest of world circus domination, sweetie. And to let the world know we are serious, I plan to make a fabulous flight to Zimbabwe. Hey Max, what do you think Zimbabwe's like? Do you think there are castles made of cake and bunnies who can talk? I think if there are any talking bunnies, even they won't laugh at most jokes. I'm ready. I'm ready. There's no way these jokes are gonna fall on deaf ears. I'm going to be more contemporary with my humor. Mo curls are r r represent. We've got our new act all work out. Prepare for the hallelujah chorus. Say something, will you? You're supposed to start this off. Get on with it. Matt is actually an okay villain. I like that he's just an ass for the sake of being an ass. What's this? Drat! It's just an ordinary electric razor recharging on the stand. I can't believe this, really! How long did they plan on making me do this? Oh, but it's Edgy Pooh's idea, so that means it must have a deep hidden meaning. But why do I get the feeling they wouldn't forget about me, would they? 
Oh, it was never like this in the old days. Everyone thought the world of me. They used to call me Queen Wendy and treat me like royalty. And everybody who hadn't heard me was going to feel the pain of my heels. Yes, I'm going to be a burn and burn and playing with fire. It's very dangerous. Oh God, she's still shutting up. Thankfully, that's the last we see of her. At least as an active role. I appreciate everything you and Mr. Edgeworth did for me from the bottom of my heart. Oh, that's right. I received a letter from Miss Von Karma. She said that after I get out, I should feel free to consult her about anything at all. I'm really thankful to have met everyone. It has become difficult for me in this country as of late. As such, I will take a short leave of absence. If you would like to request my services, please be sure to visit my homepage. May we both be blessed with longevity. Where are you going, Francesca? How did you know I was here? With this. I heard you were planting things on a certain person. Things like tracking devices in his coat, for example. Hmm. That's just like you. I only planted it there because he was always wearing it. This filthy drab coat of his. I don't know how it ended up in my luggage, but it's going in the trash, I promise you that. Oh, that's right. Speaking of that man, he told me something very interesting. When I ran off with the things from the killer's hideouts, I was sure I took four things in total, sir. Four items? It seems he put the last one in his coat pocket. He put it in here? It doesn't matter anymore. The case is already over. What are you going to do now? That's none of your business. Are you running away? Shut up! You don't understand a thing. You can't possibly understand what it means to be Manfred von Karma's daughter. Francesca. So many expectations from everyone around me. Expectations I must fulfill. I'm expected to win no matter what. And failure? Such a thing is not an option for me. My father was a genius. There's no doubt about that. But... But me. I'm no genius. I've always known that. But I... I had to be one. I had to. You may not be a genius like your father, but... You are a prosecutor. You have been, and always will be. No, I am not. Not anymore. I've even thrown my whip away. Speaking of that... Wright gave me this to hold on to. Right. You knew something like this would happen, didn't you? I'm going to say this again. We prosecutors do not fight for personal honor or pride. I hope you will think deeply about what you should be striking down with that whip. You haven't changed a bit. You've always... You've always left me alone and walked on ahead without me. Miles Edgeworth, I've always hated you. And then, finally, my chance to take my revenge on you arrived. If I could win against that man, if I could make Phoenix Wright bow down and defeat, then this girl you left behind would have risen higher than you. That was supposed to be my revenge. I see. 
You know... You know I can't do it. I can't change who I am. I can't throw away everything I've been until now. I believe you can. Just like how Adrian Andrews did. Adrian Andrews? You were going to use her during the trial, right? But you... You were dependent on your father by using his tactics. Isn't that right? Hmm. Today, you chased after me, after I had left you behind all these years. And that's why we're standing here now, side by side. But I have no intentions of stopping. If you say you are going to quit your walk down the prosecutor's path, then this is where we part ways, Francesca von Karma. <laughs> I... I am Francesca von Karma. Don't think I'm going to walk in your shadow forever. Our battle begins now, so you'd better prepare yourself, Miles Edgeworth. Phoenix Wright. One day, someday, I'm sure we'll meet again in battle. Until then, this last piece of evidence that never made it to you. I'll take good care of this fourth piece, so I can give it to you when at last we meet again. By the way, this piece, this thing will never appear again. It's basically a red herring. Nobody seems to remember it exists. Also, I know a lot of people are kind of hating the scene with Francisca there because they think it just changed her strong personality into a weak person who cries, you know, a weak crying girl. But I think it was pretty decent. It sort of showed that her her facade was breaking. As for the case overall, I've said it before, I find that it takes too long. It drags on, it tries to make me care about Maya, which I have to say I'm glad that they didn't try to do this kidnapping part about as a method of making me care about Maya very early on, like in the first case, or the first game, because I don't like that. I don't really start to care for a character very fast. So if they do it very early on, all I'm thinking is, why should I try to help them since I don't really care about them? As for Maya, they did it in the second game, I'm sure people who do like Maya actually do care. I've seen it on the court records um, forum that people do care, which is fine. Think about me as this was my first game, so I only knew her for about three cases before she was taken away. So technically, I didn't know her for very long, but. I had read recaps of her in the first game, so I already knew her a bit more. So I'm a, I'm a bit mixed. I'm, I don't feel that her being kidnapped was done too early, but I don't think it was done very well. The kidnapping was a stupid idea to get Phoenix under pressure. And I'll say it again, the message that Phoenix learns, the message of what a lawyer actually does and what he should do to work for his client or for the truth, it's very good. You know, I think uh, every lawyer should learn that. But the way it's executed here is just painful because he doesn't really seem to learn much. Most of the time he's walking around blindly and then he has the moping and the whining about Maya being gone, so I really can't tell if he's actually thinking about what it means to be a lawyer. 
Then we have that one scene towards the end where he realizes that he really trusts Edgeworth and that he goes for the truth as a lawyer. But it's very late and it feels a bit rushed since it's during the trial and we are actually trying to do something else during the trial. So putting it there felt a bit hurried. It didn't feel the way it could have been done. So, well, as a sequel to the first Ace Attorney game, I think it's pretty good. It had four cases just as the original first game had. That was pretty good. The length was, I think, similar. I don't remember right now. This is two hours long up to now, or past two hours. And, uh, well, currently the Let's Play list lists about 35 hours in total of watching time from case 1-1 to this case. So with this, let's say about 38 hours in total with the not uploaded yet pieces of this case. So 38 hours in 8 cases, that's pretty good. Each about maybe four hours, maybe shorter, maybe longer, depending on where the case is. So as a sequel, it's a good game. It feels like it really gave us a final case with Phoenix since he learned a lesson. It was a good lesson. But this is only the second game. There's still the third game, Trials and Tribulations, which I am going to do next, but I'm going to take a break from this first because I want to focus on my Persona 3 Portable Let's Play. And I overall want to say that the third game feels a bit unnecessary to me. Phoenix doesn't really change much. We learn a lot more about the Fae Clan, which I don't know. I didn't really care about them. But the third game focuses a lot on the Fae family and on explaining why this one new character in the third game is there, which isn't very nice, so that eventually culminate that eventually resorted into the case 3-5, which I guess people liked it. I thought it was a long case, it was a stupid case, and the villain of the case was boring, and the overall villain, villain of that game was rather disappointing. So this game was okay, good as a sequel. The third game, not very looking forward to it. But I guess if you like the Fae Clan, you are going to like the third game. I'll see you in the next Ace Attorney game let's play. See you soon!